When we first learned about our final leadership presentation for FES Urban Forestry and Management, um, and that we were going to be required to present a TED Talk, I thought this was a great opportunity to demonstrate some new skills, to talk about ideas worth sharing, and to really find something that could connect with people. And then as the quarter went on, I liked the concept even more. It grew on me, and the idea of finding a topic that was worth educating other people about and connecting them to um, was something that I really wanted to delve more into. And then it was further inspired when my dad passed away about a month ago in this quarter. And it got me to thinking after my dad passed a lot about, you know, reviewing people's lives and what they really find as important and how they instill principles in people either directly or indirect, indirectly, um, whether they be, you know, the president of the United States or someone as simple as someone that just is reliable at work and shows up on time all the time. And hardly ever makes any any ruffles at work um, and just wants to be a good person and has a good heart. Um, so it could be someone simple, someone more complex. But the quote my dad loved um, was, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. He basically redirected himself back to this quote a lot throughout his life, um, mostly during his recovery stages of his life and um, different chapters when he was with different people, living in different places, what have you. But it really kind of helped him in his growth process and his development. And again, it got me to thinking more about overlap and integration of concepts. And that's where I found the inspiration for the overall theme in this, this presentation today is how, how important it is to integrate concepts and fields across multiple disciplines and um, to really bring in ideas from lots of different perspectives and backgrounds. And that's how you can really make improvement and find um, achievement, growth, and development, and even greatness um, in an or urban forestry context. So again, to go back into my dad, um, reviewing for his speech, because his service is tomorrow, and we're actually going to be presenting tomorrow in about the same amount of time frame as today's TED Talk. Um, it got me to thinking about heroes, because he identified himself as Iron Man quite frequently. And in fact, the last note he left my stepmom the night before he passed, um, he recognized himself as Iron Man twice. So evidently, he, he, he foresaw himself as a superhero. And even though that's not a realistic um, being, there is a lot of carryover into our, into our everyday lives and leadership. And how even though a superhero is not, is not real, it's fictional, um, a concept of a hero is real. And sometimes that's what helps us, motivates us and drives us to find that you know, that overlay or that integration and to really kind of move us forward from good to greatness. So again, it got me to thinking about what, how you define a hero. So heroes can be defined in lots of different, you know, ways. They can be seen as superheroes, which are fictional, or they can be what we make of them. They could be someone as simple as someone that just goes to work and shows up to work on time and is very reliable. Uh, they don't have to come in a certain package. They can come from any background and it could be different ages um, it could be someone that's like a mentor or a coach or um, maybe just a supervisor or someone that's been in the field for years and you have something that you feel you can learn from. And a lot of times they have heart. Um, a lot of times they work through a lot of adversity. They have failures and successes. But ultimately, we, we, we turn to someone as a hero to, to learn and to grow and to develop. And so that's how I, how I saw my dad, is that I guess maybe he wasn't a superhero in many respects, but he was a hero in terms of being a father figure that I could look up to and someone that was demonstrated some things that people could learn from. So anyways, to go into the next part of this, of this presentation, I'm going to take the concept of heroes and also leaders and integration of concepts into the hedgehog, hedgehog hog concept, which um, Jim Collins discussed about, you know, the process to go from good to great in an organizational context, an urban forestry context. And the hedgehog concept, um, basically it's about producing the best long-term results and then exercising the relentless dis discipline in order to carry it out. So not only seeing a goal, but also carrying it through through implementation and actually seeing its results in a positive way. So based on the hedgehog hedgehog concept, there are three um, circles that integrate into each other. One has to do with passion. So in order to have a goal and to see it through, you should ultimately be passionate about what the overall mission is, core values, as well as the purpose. Um, know it in your organization. 
Second, uh, understanding what the organization can ultimately contribute to the people it touches in terms of the world, you know, how it plays in the bigger picture of things, in the bigger scheme. I mean, if there can be an argument uh, that says that, you know, your objective is going to help a greater number of people, then it probably will have more support backing from it. And then the last thing, the last circle, is about the economic engine and what drives this forward. So basically it's the things that are more concrete, like time, money, and brand, the things that actually put your plan into action. And, you know, when you're addressing all these things, um, what, what Collins uh, basically says is that where these integrate and come together and connect in the middle is where you have real growth and development and greatness. And yes, you're going to reach um, adversity and challenges along the way. And it is about accepting, um, you know, what the current reality is of the situation. But overall, um, it's definitely a way to drive your organization forward. And to tie back to my dad, you know, he was a hero in a respect and in a sense. And sometimes that's what you need in order to find that passion. You have to find someone you look up to. So based on the Stockdale paradox, Based on the Stockdale paradox, you must retain faith that you can prevail to greatness in the end while retaining the discipline to confront the brutal facts of your current reality or situation. This ties back to my dad's favorite quote about serenity, about accepting the things we cannot change, and having the courage to change the things that we can. Ultimately, this seems to be his driving force throughout his life and what carried him through his last days into his, remaining, his last remaining breath. I'm going to take these initial concepts and now tie them into an actual organization that addresses natural resource protection and conservation initiatives and implements and attempts to make an environmental difference in the world, if not our country. The Environmental Protection Agency is an organization or an agency that's set up for efficiency, renewable, environmental protection, conservation reasons to basically address the current environmental problems that we have and find some collaborative working relationship and partnership with others to try to achieve a more positive result in these respects. So they created the competencies-based future model uh, to solve environmental problems. This involves collaboration between stakeholders, NGOs, private, public, nonprofit, forestry managers, landowners, etc. In August of 2004, President Bush signed into action the Executive Order 13352, Facilitation of Cooperative Conservation, which basically addresses actions that relate to use, enhancement, and enjoyment of natural resources, protection of the environment, and or both, and that involve collaborative activity among federal, state, local, non-governmental entities, and individuals. So basically, it's trying to get a working relationship and partnership working together between lots of different backgrounds. The collaboration for the government um, area is basically between EPA, Department of Defense, Interior and Agriculture, uh, NOAA, Department of Commerce, and the external relations are for individuals and any stakeholders outside of those departments. Now, the collaboration and partnering action plan, you can see it in, in my presentation, but basically it's a working ag arrangement or objective forward thinking into the future and it calls upon personnel at all levels of the departments and, and um, agency and basically will nearly affect everyone um, when it's all implemented and said and done. Eventually, the competencies will cascade down from the SES positions through to managers, middle managers, staff, etc. And it'll influence hiring, recruitment, rewards, etc. But basically, this model focuses on a professionally driven improvement plan, um, which starts with development and competency, learning, training, education, also succession planning, so promotion eligibility, and what's driving these promotions, personal goals and commitments as they also align with the organization's objectives, and even recognition and rewards. So basically how to motivate people to perform certain duties while also following the overall mission and vision and objectives of the organization. So ultimately, um, I think by following and creating these plans in an environmental perspective, natural resources and urban forestry, 
uh, we can really that organizations can really drive their their you know their 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 people forward and really make a positive difference in the world. And to tie back to heroes and leaders from the earlier part of this discussion, it's about finding somebody that inspires you or something that inspires you. Maybe it be a hero, maybe it be a superhero, maybe it be someone fictional or someone alive. Maybe it could be your dad, or it could just be a friend, um, or it could be a role model in the field, someone that's been there for years. But anyways, in conclusion, it's about finding what you're passionate about and really engaging in it, taking a hold of that passion and keep pushing until you see success. I mean, not giving up ultimately and maybe doing a little bit of whatever it takes in order to make it happen. And in the environmental realm, um, it probably means doing a lot. I mean, it might mean changing our current system and addressing more of an ecological framework for how to address our, our concerns and our and our needs moving forward, not just from a purely economic standpoint. And it's also about building collaborative partnerships and relations with other organizations, whether it be internal or external. But ultimately, by building these collaborative efforts, natural resource protection efforts could be achieved and across various fields. And this is a good transition to GREAT, which Collins recognizes that we ideally do want. And in a final concluding remark I'd like to make on this, I'd like to tie in my own experiences with crossing over and overlaying different fields. I started off my master's program in education in library science and have now entered the master's in natural resources program. And I find that as a librarian, there's a lot of skills that carry over into the field. Um, I find that I'm a librarian that now wants to provide GIS services, which is, which is geographic information services, and really kind of help move the librarianship field forward into the digital realm um, where we can turn map documents into digital documents. And again, um, maybe it be organizing and providing more authoritative references in the reference section of a presentation where you have lots of different environmentalists and organizations in the environmental protection area coming together to work together. It might be about providing relevant research or organizing um, an authoritative presentation. But there's just a lot of overlap. And I think when you find where these these different backgrounds can connect, you know, that center point in the circle for the hedgehog concept, then you're really going to be able to find that progression from good to greatness. So with this said, thank you so much for having me today. And it's been an honor to hopefully present an idea worth sharing. Thank you.